Welcome to my channel. This is Moody. So today I'm going to tell you how you can approach physics. So these are important tips which you need to consider each time when you're solving a physics question or you're studying physics. Or if you want to understand the question, these are things which you need to put into consideration. Because if you don't do so, it will be hard for you to understand what physics. So one thing you need to know there are laws. So you need to know the laws associated with what? The question which you are doing what? You are looking at. Because this will help you to understand what they are talking about. Because if you don't do so, it will be hard for you. Then secondly, after doing so, you will do what? You imagine. So how do you imagine? For instance, a person walked from point A. Here, look at this person. Moved from point A to point what? To point B for what? Two meters. Look at, I drew a person. Huh? I'm imagining my head person was walking so I have to imagine okay in that direction and give that direction with a certain time for instance. Now when you look at this it looks very complicated. So you can't be drawing each time a person or what or a vehicle you can't be drawing that. We are not artists but we are scientists. So this is what you need to do. You just do a box. So a box can mean a person can mean a car anything so long as there's detail in it. But in your head you imagine you know what a person those are the things which is not no. So a person moves from this point to that point. It looks even better, not so. Then from there, that's when you think about what? A formula. What formulas are associated with that? Then that's when you do what? You solve. Once you do so, it will be easy for you to do what? To understand that. So how can you remember the law? It is just what? Leaves. Laws, imagination, formula. Then that's when you solve. These four things, these are things you don't need what? To point to in consideration before you start solving any question in what? In physics. So there are my details where you can find me. Please subscribe so that you don't miss out. And also click the notification button so that each time I post a new video, you are notified. So in physics, you all you'll be looking at are physical what? quantities. Things which you can do what uh, measure with your what? Uh, your, your instruments. And also when it comes to units, what units are you supposed to use? Because there are many units which you can use just over length. You can use centimeters if you want kilometers, no, no. They are what we call standard units, so that when you even in solving, we use what standard units. So, meaning that if the units are not in standard form, you need to do what to convert, you need to know how to convert. And also, the one thing which I need you to understand is that each time when you're solving physical quantities, they can either be physical quantities can either be not basic quantities or derived uh, quantities. I will see, I'll tell you the difference. So, the difference is. When it comes to basic quantities, there will be only one unit with them. As you can see, these are only just one unit, one unit, one unit. But when it comes to derived, they are a combination of what? Two basic quantities or more than two basic quantities, as you will see later on. But for basic quantities, it's only length, length, mass, mass. But when it comes to derived units, there are two things. So like these are the examples. So for instance here, as you can see, density is kg. Kg if you saw back here, kg is associated with mass. Then when you look at the, uh, the m here, m it is meter. It is associated with what? Length, which is calculated in what? In meters, not so. So normally these are derived unit consist of what? Formulas. So that is the formula and the units. So some of you might be wondering, how come here, but it is m squared, isn't it the same with, with the other one? You know, here there is a square, if you see that square, that's a difference. Even here, power 3, that's a difference, power 3, that's a difference. As you see, here, the meter and the second, you know, there, second it is what? Time here it is what? Length. So, so long as they are two, even if they repeat themselves, it is no longer a basic unit, it becomes now, a derived unit you need to take note about that so now you need to understand that these basic units or derived units sometimes they can be associated with other things what we call prefixes so you need to know you need to convert those before you do your solving so like for instance one kg is the same as what 100 grams also 1000 grams also so this is what you need to know so for instance kg it can be written as 1000 or 10 power 3, so on the same. Also, the, the, the symbol it is that. So, when you see something, maybe kg, you need to know that what they are talking about is that. 
So, for instance, here is an example. You have two centimeter in your question. You can't use this to two centimeter. No, you need to convert it into what? Standard units. So into meters. So what is centimeter? Centimeter, you need to check here. So you need to know with time you come to know this. So centimeter is the same as 0 0.01 or 10 power negative 2. It's one and the same. You multiply so this number with that. Then it will give you what? 0 0.02 meters. Try out, you try out for what, what to GB mean. So GB here, you, when you see, your GB meaning giga. Look at this big number, which is the same as 10 power 9, less the power 9 or exponent 9. So it will give you a big number. No wonder we just use what? This is, this is why we use prefaces instead of all just using what? Uh, the, just writing numbers which are big. Like this number, how many zeros are there? There are a lot of zeros, as you can see. This is not even making sense, also. Then, now, how do you convert? What are the things which you need to put into consideration when converting maybe from one unit to the other unit? Then, centimeter, you, need, you want to take them into meters, or then kilometers, you want to take them into kilometers. Also, maybe the time is in days, maybe years, months, what are you supposed to do? So, you need to move with this order. When converting, always move with the order. Something which is next, as you can see here, kilometers there are certain uh, units which are bigger than kilometer, like head, yeah, let's say hectare, you see, miles, they are bigger than what kilometer, also. But there are some which are also less than kilometer, like meter, centimeter, millimeter, you can go on. Same with time, also, when it comes to time, look at there are months, years, days, hours in that order, minute, second, as you can see. So, when you are converting, this is the order which you are supposed to do. So you can't convert just days direct into what? Uh, second, it will be hard for you, no. But you need to move in this order. So you need to know how many days make hours, then how many hours make a minute, from one minute, how many, uh, uh, from one, one hour, how many minutes can you have? Same, from one minute, how many seconds are there? This will help you to do what? To know how to calculate very easy without facing difficulty. Same with length. So you need to know how many in one kilometer how many meters do you have then in one meters how many centimeters do you have in that order even if they have told you to move from kilometer into second let us look at the question like this one we are told to do what to convert this into meters per second square so as you can see here there are two what two quantities not so this kilometer and the hour so this is a derived so we just need to do this, this is the same as kilometers divided by hour. So you write this, then you multiply, then you start converting. So you start with something which is on top here. So what do you do? You do what? You just do the reciprocate of this, since it is on top, it goes down. So you just write one of it, kilometer over, then how many, uh, one, uh, when one kilometer, how many meters do you have? It is the same as 1000 or 10 to the power 3. This is what you can see, you are seeing here. Then you are done, you have converted. Then you come to our, you multiply again, you open brackets, then you do the same also here. So since here, the hour it is down there, you do the reciprocate, so it goes up, you just say one hour, so that these they can be able to do what? To cancel out. Now look at, you can't just move from hours direct to uh, seconds, no. So what is next to hours, it is minutes, so you say, how, in one hour, how many minutes do we have? It is sixty. This is a sixty which you are seeing. Then times you have not reached. Then in one minute, how many seconds do we have? They are sixty again. This is a sixty which you are seeing. Then you just multiply. This is how it goes. So you find that the hour and the hour will cancel out. Then the kilometer and the kilometer will cancel out. Then you remain with what? Meter and second. This is what you remain with. Then you just multiply. Oh, even this one you can just do over one. You don't give in temper with this. You just temper in with what? Units. Only. You see, then to come out like this, which is the same as like that. Same with this one now. Do the same like I had explained here. So this is what was also happening here. No wonder you can see here, you are converting this into meters per second squared. You do the same. As you can see, you can go through. Same with mouse here. At times they even give you what it means. So you can go through. So now let us move on to the other part. So the other part is that you need to know that the x or y plane is what arbitrary. It is not always like uh, the y axis is supposed to be always like, like 
but this, here like we used to teach you at high school or this side the x-axis no and the, that, the positive side is this side and the, only the positive side is also that side for the y no 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 it is a bit right so if you want you can say the x is that side the y is that side it is a bit right it is you to decide and also the origin is not always on zero no if you want you can put you can start your your, your calculation from this point even if the question they haven't told you you can start from here if you want from two it's a bit right so you need to decide yourself two things which you need to know the xy plane is a bit ready the y axis is not always this side or the x-axis is decided. It's you to decide. And always you are supposed to know your reference point. Where you are starting from? Where do I want to start from? So always you need to have a reference point. Or oh, my reference point, maybe for instance, it's here at zero. Then what am I saying? Is going up y positive or negative? It's up to me. Same if I'm here going this side, it is x. Uh, when this side my negative it's up to me so it's up to you to decide these are the things which you need to know like uh, these are what a bit right it's up to you to decide these are things which you need to know hopefully it has made sense and given it has given you an insight of what you will encounter in physics so subscribe so that each time i post a new video more interesting videos are coming expanding on what i'm explaining in this video so if you're not consistent, it won't be making sense. Thank you.